Every once in a while, it is important in the YouTube tech community that we move away from the traditional builds, how to's and reviews type videos and do something that's a little bit different. And that's what we have been doing recently. Jay, Paul, Steve, and I have been participating in the RIP series and posting some really decent scores in 3D Mark Port Royal. Now, I understand if there is a subset of you guys out there who is, I don't know, kind of sick of this content because you don't want to see it and you want to get back to watching me build computers. And we will 100% be doing that but I wanted to wait until the embargo lifts on a number of very important and very new products that already have arrived in the office, but I can't yet show you. So if I were to continue to do builds with the existing product lines, you'd be seeing rehashes of projects that I have done over the past year or so. And to be honest, that gets a little bit boring, both for me and probably for you. So until that embargo lifts, I'm going to be trying out different types of videos, and that includes more of this RIP series. I have a couple of peripheral reviews I wanted to do, as well as a motherboard roundup. So hopefully that kind of content will kind of carry us over until I can fully show you all of the really, really cool stuff that has arrived and that I am dying to play with. But today we are going a little bit harder than we have been because I have in the office two of these monster pots from Bits Power. These are GPU pots. They are full copper, they weigh a million pounds and they are going to allow us to try some dry ice cooling on our RTX 3090. So we are gonna see how high we can get on the single card leaderboard today and if all goes well, I will install this one on a For The Win 3 card and we'll try some SLI stuff, maybe in a live stream later this week. So if you guys are down and you wanna see that kind of content along with the Ryzen 3000 launch, the RTX 3070 launch, the big Navi launch, a whole bunch of new case launches that are happening soon, make sure you get subscribed to the channel so you don't miss it because it will be coming up as soon as those embargoes allow us to talk about it on camera for you guys. But until then, I have a full cooler full of dry ice and I am dying to see what this card can actually do. So let's get into it and I promise you we'll be back to our normal video schedule very soon. Today's video is sponsored by a clothing company, which is not something that I normally do, but Into the AM hit me up and they're like, hey, we got some super comfortable t-shirts. They're not crazy or outlandish or anything like that. They don't cost a ton. And we're gonna send over a couple for you to check out. They did. I actually wore them the entire time that I was out away on vacation. I was in Vegas for a couple of days a few weeks ago and they were awesome. I really do like them. They are super comfortable and lightweight. They come in a bunch of different colors and different patterns. They also have hoodies as well and they make my arms look really good, which I definitely can appreciate. So if you need a hoodie or a t-shirt, check out Into the AM at the link down below. No time to mess around today because I have never done dry ice overclocking and to be honest, I've only ever done LN2 overclocking one time before. I mounted this pot already, but I have some footage from when I was messing around with it. Let's rewind to that, and then we're gonna get this kicked off. This is the MSI RTX 3090 Gaming X Trio. It's kind of been the all-star so far. Uh, I think the For The Win 3 card was a better overall performer, but this has been very strong, and um, it didn't blow up like the For The Win 3 card did, although I guess that's probably my fault. Uh, but we are going to be moving to a different cooling solution so you can see that I took off the block that we've been using. This is the Corsair XC9 block. It's still hooked up to our full custom uh, chilled water loop, but we are going to be moving to something a little more substantial, and that is this. This is a Bits Power liquid nitrogen slash dry ice cooling pot. Uh, you can see it's got a giant copper coal plate on the back. Uh, the only issue is that this was made for cards that came out before this and there's only one GPU pot right now on the market that has a mounting solution for Ampere cards and that's Kingpin's Icon and that thing is out of stock everywhere. So I figured I can make this fit. Now the only problem is that it's, it's the mounting plate that's off. Now this mounting plate has spacing for 20 series cards but the Ampere cards have actually a rectangular mounting pattern instead of square. So you can see the little black dots that I drew on here. 
This is what I'm actually gonna have to drill out and make new mounting for, uh, for the Ampere cards because that is not a square. It is taller than it is wide. So we have two different plates. We have this one and then we have this one. This one is gonna be the more difficult because the screws that go through this one have to be flush mounted. So I'm gonna to have to figure out a way to do that and also tap, these are tapped screws. So I'm gonna to have to head over to the hardware store and get myself a tap that corresponds to the threading on here and also figure out a way to flush mount these screws. And if I could do that, I think this pot will actually work really, really well because its size actually allows for really good spacing when it comes to uh, including the SLI bridge. A lot of pots are a little bit wide and interfere with the uh, the spacing where the where the bridge has to go. And this doesn't. So hopefully we can get this mounted and uh, get our cooling on. All right, this is taking me a little while, but I have new countersunk uh, screw holes in this mounting plate. These screw holes are supposed to be threaded. And originally that is what I was doing. Um, I had, um, my uh, my tap kit out and I was threading these holes it's um these are the, the new ones right there I was threading these holes and my tap uh, it's an m3 screw in case you're wondering but my tap snapped right off oh geez yeah it just snapped right off right in the middle of it so I have a different plan what I'm going to do is I actually drill these out a little bit wider I'm gonna pass the screws through and then I'm gonna JB weld them in place so that they are flush. I also um, used a uh, countersink to uh, to make sure that they're flush mounted. Jeez, this camera is not good, there we go. Um, this is the only one that concerns me because it is very close to the edge, but to be honest, I think that the amount of pressure that's gonna be on this plate is fine. It's pretty thick. It's not gonna, not gonna break the plate. So I'm gonna JB weld the screws in place through this plate uh, and then be able to pass them through the mounting holes and then into the front plate, uh, which I've also drilled out the, the corresponding holes for. And you can see that I used a, I used a Dremel to kind of make sure that everything was clean. But uh, that's the plan. So let's see if this actually works. So it does appear that uh, my mounting solution is working or has worked. Uh, I put these screws through the mounting plate and then affixed them with uh, some JB Weld and they're holding pretty well. This isn't fully cured yet. It takes four to six hours to cure. So I'm just gonna um, do a, like a, I'm not gonna torque everything down just yet, but it looks like this is good to go. The mounting plate is then affixed to the pot with these um, eight screws. Then we have our GPU, which is set up now with a nice layer of Kingpin's KPX thermal paste. And I've taken some precautions and tried to uh, apply some, some clear nail polish around the memory modules, just to try to uh, prevent them anything from shorting with the inevitable condensation. Did that on the back as well. So let's get this pot on here and uh, see where it takes us. Success. This mounts well and flush. Uh, I'm gonna just put this down because this is, the pot is very heavy, it's full copper. So these aren't torqued down all the way just yet, just because once the, the JB Weld sets a little better, I'll be able to torque these down without worry, without the, uh, of the screws coming loose. But um, this needs to be insulated. Uh, I need to insulate the pot and then I need to insulate the motherboard. And then uh, we'll be set and we'll do some, uh, I think we'll do some dry ice today. Here is the rig we'll be going with. You can see obviously that we went back to an AIO. When I had the chilled water loop set up, it was pretty easy to just kind of loop in the CPU as well, but it's not really necessary. There's not a huge load on our processor for this test. So just went back to a 360 AIO. We're still gonna be running this at 5.2 gigahertz. This is our 10900 KF and uh, 10 cores, no hyper threading, 5.2. That should be plenty for Port Royal. 
running it in the Maximus 12 Apex from Asus. This board has been rock solid and absolutely amazing for overclocking. If you guys are doing any overclocking with Intel 10th Gen, I'm pretty sure this is the board to do it with right now. And then here is our graphics card. You can see that we insulated the back uh, and then insulated the pot as well. I know the lighting over here isn't that great, but I have, um, I have a uh, thread up a screwdriver down there just for support because this pot is heavy. Uh, but I have some paper towels there, there, and then uh, along the board also to prevent condensation and then the, the pot is insulated. So uh, everything should be good to go and uh, time to bust out that dry ice. Got a nice initial dry ice bath going there uh, with some 99% isopropyl. Um, temperature reading is negative 24 here and negative 31 here so it looks like our mount is probably really solid and um, I'm not going to fill this up just yet go for a, a little more dry ice I got two full thermoses of it I, plus I got more in the garage but we could definitely go colder and maintain that cold for a while but while we're at you know minus or we're at minus 26 uh, let's let's lay down some scores so I'm going to do my initial run here both with precision up and uh, GPU-Z up. I want to see some readings on the power draw and obviously you want to monitor temperature and stuff and I'm just going to leave precision up and running uh, although I know it obviously takes a little bit of a hit on the system. Um, this is running with the basically the same overclock that I used just on chilled water which is plus 800 on the memory plus 130 on the core voltage all the way up, uh, power all the way up. So we'll see how this run does. And uh, then obviously this is, hopefully this will complete and then we'll take this as our baseline moving forward. So quite the dilemma here. I couldn't get 3D Mark to run at all. Every time I loaded the benchmark, it would crash immediately. It wouldn't initialize any 3D application, uh, which leads me to believe that there might be an issue with power on the graphics card. And I did to, it did short two of the shunt resistors on here, uh, so maybe that's an issue. It's going to be really hard for me to work on with the dry ice still bubbling away over there. Um, so I'm gonna put this video on pause while I try to work on this and then come back and we'll try to get a score. One hour later. Huh, so it turns out it was a CPU over temperature error, not a GPU error. So our CPU is running at 74C with the, uh, the EK AIO in place. So I'm gonna have to swap out this AIO for something that's better, I don't know. I thought this one was fine, but clearly not. CPU over temperature, look at that. All right, not a graphics card problem, thank God. All right, we're back. We're gonna try this with a Asus Tech cooler. This is just the Asus Strix cooler. Starting to get a good amount of frost on our pot, but the insulation looks to be holding up pretty well. There's some frost on the back side of the card. Should be okay as long as it doesn't start melting while we are powered up. Um, and uh, yeah, let's try to get a run or two in. Not running. <sighs> okay, so this is not running. It might be a power issue. Uh, I'll have to investigate. One hour later. So, here is the situation. I can't get this now to run any tests at all. It would boot, as you guys saw, and then Port Royal would crash. I ran heaven, I looped heaven for, I don't know, maybe five minutes and then that crashed. It's not a matter of temperature, that's for sure. Even in Precision X, it was reading in the negatives, negative 40, negative 50. Um, I haven't added any dry ice to this in a bit because I want this to, to boil down. Um, switch the CPU cooler, as I said. 
I uh, looked out for like condensation in different places. So there is literally nothing around here, nothing around the, the socket at all. The paper towels, I have changed this paper towel, but there wasn't like a huge amount of condensation on it. There is no condensation down there by the slot at all. You just see it on the back of the, um, the mounting hardware here on the, uh, the insulation. There is some on the GPU, but that I think is expected and I guess kind of normal. Uh, there is some on the support bracket here. So I don't know if that's maybe getting down into the, the display outputs. I mean, I don't, I don't think so, but it might. And then I had the fans running the whole time to uh, to draw the uh, the spill over here, like this here, away. But I, I mean, I don't know. Like, so this is my first time doing this. I could be doing things all wrong, but I thought I'd followed all the proper precautions, and maybe I didn't because I can't get a test to complete. So as of right now, this video is a total failure. And uh, I guess that's why I do this so that I can sometimes fail at things and show you guys. So I'm gonna keep working on this. Hopefully at some point I can get this working and post a score. And if not, I guess we'll end this video on a very sad note. So I didn't really show you guys all the troubleshooting and diagnosing that I was doing while I was getting repeated failures over here. Uh, what I didn't realize was that for some reason the EKAIO was causing a uh, CPU overheating air, uh, issue. And anytime I tried to load anything, the system would just shut down or the application would crash. Uh, and eventually the system just refused to even boot until I just let it sit and cool down for a bit. So while that was going on and I could not run any tests, the dry ice was doing its work it was making sure that the pot was nice and cold. We were getting down to minus 50, minus 60 degrees, which is where you should be with dry ice. Um, and while I was working on the CPU issue, this, the pot stayed cold and then continued to build up more and more condensation and frost. And then while I started to work on the, um, the CPU issue, it looks like some of that frost again started to melt and the, the, the card was just ended up covered in condensation by the end. Um, and I took some video of it after I dismounted it and the condensation got worse at that point because it wasn't actively being cooled. So the footage here looks way, way worse than it did when it was mounted. Still though, the condensation on the card, on the pot, on the insulation, I think was contributing to that card just not functioning at the end. and. I think it just comes down to time. Like I took too much time in order to start doing my runs once I got the pot cold. And as a result, condensation, water, doesn't play nice with electronics. So what I did to test the system was I popped in an RX 560 because it was the easiest little graphics card to just grab and put on the bench and everything's still working fine. The CPU, the memory, the motherboard is fine. Um, I have a feeling the GPU is gonna be fine also although I guess we don't know yet, um, but I'm pretty sure. Uh, so I guess that's the end of this video. Um, the highest Port Royal score I achieved today uh, was zero, uh, a valid score of zero. So I guess that's uh, that's something, you know. But uh, I, I, I think that it's important when you're doing this kind of testing to understand that you're not always gonna be successful and failure is a part of life and as long as you learn something along the way i think it's fine so i'm not overly upset uh i did have high hopes here and i definitely going to try it again um maybe with a little a little better precautions taken i mean i thought i did pretty well with the insulating and whatnot but i'm not a pro at this so i'm just some guy with a youtube channel and uh, I appreciate you guys watching and coming along for, uh, for my successes and failures. And we'll get back uh, on the leaderboard as soon as possible. So thank you so much for watching, guys. This video was uh, interesting. And um, next one will be, I don't know, next one will be a little different. Thanks a lot, and we'll see you next time. But wait, this video is not over. I thought it was over. You probably thought it was over. It's not over. 
I took the card off, took the pot off, completely dried everything with a hair dryer, made sure that there was no moisture left on any component. And then I plasti dipped this RTX 3090 uh, to cover everything except the components that need to be cooled. So then I remounted the pot, re-insulated the pot, and everything seems to be working right now. And I have a decent score, hold on, Uh, 15152 uh, and that's at a, an overclock that's not really crazy I was kind of doing this um, on chilled water so I think I, I mean as I've said many times before even though I've power modded this card it, it still is hitting a power ceiling right now we're at nine, minus 49 degrees here on the pot um, the MSI afterburner stops reading at minus 42 so um, I'm actually I'm actually quite surprised with how quickly the temperatures will come up as soon as I start running this test. Dry ice is uh, dry ice is a far cry from liquid nitrogen in that aspect. However, it's still keeping it in the negatives when we are running the test. Um, you can see, kind of see the card here. I, I, the reason why I didn't show you is because it's kind of covered up by everything, but you can see that it's all everything's black. It's all plastered at black just to keep the moisture off of the components. But anyway. So yeah, temperatures really start to climb quickly when you're dealing with um, dry ice and an overclocked 3090 apparently. So I'm gonna let this cool all the way down to maybe minus 60 or so, and then I'm gonna try uh, another overclock. Even though we're power limited, maybe I could get another 10 megahertz out of the core and maybe another 50 or 75 out of the memory. And I'd like to try to top my personal best which is 15 to something. And um, even if we don't get there, to be honest, I consider this video a success because I was able to get this working and I am happy with that. Which means that we could probably do SLI in the future once my my uh, my other GPUs come in. I have um, I, I was able to get able to get another for the win three. So yeah, good times all around. Uh, I'm very happy with the results here. I was kind of bummed out before. I mean, I wasn't upset, like I said, but I, I mean, I was a little, little bummed out. But now, no longer bummed out. Very happy. Things are working. And if we can get a better score, I will let you guys know. So I wasn't able to top my score of 15.2 and change. The highest I got was actually 15.200 flat, which was still pretty good, but didn't bump me up the leaderboard at all. What I actually did was I loaded on the EVGA for the Win 3 Ultra BIOS, and then that allowed me to load their new XOC BIOS. So now this card has a 500 watt power limit and I shorted two more of the shunt resistors. Uh, I'm not gonna continue with this. I actually have something to go and do. Uh, and this video has to be published. You will see it today actually, in probably in just an hour or two. Um, but we continue to, uh, to bubble away and uh, that's going to take quite a while to, uh, to boil off and then I'm going to have to let the card rest for a bit. So, uh, but I am glad that I got it working and I think the, I think this pot mount is good. So I'm going to leave it and then, um, we'll work on some SLI stuff. Because I have actually a lot more dry ice in the um, in the garage, and I'm not sure how long it's going to last. So maybe I'll try to do something tomorrow. I don't know, but I have the option, and I'm glad that this video was not for nothing. I'm glad we got something out of it that this cooling solution will work, uh, and then I can improve on it in the future. Because like I said, this was my first time doing this, so I think the next time I go about it, um, I will kind of jump right in and not allow any condensation to happen and just kind of get right to you know pushing those overclocks and hopefully we end up with a good score so victory out of the jaws of defeat in this video thank you again so much for watching i'll see you next time